and welcome to Little Learners. In today's video, we're going to be looking at addition and how you can support your child when they're learning to add. When we first start teaching children about addition, we focus on one more. This is a very simple form of addition that children can easily understand. So for example, I have two teddy bears. If I add one more, how many are there now? Using the language of one more helps children understand that when we're adding, we're increasing the number. It also means that just by adding one more, there isn't too much information for children to process. So when you add one more teddy bear or smarty or stick or whatever you want to use, children can then go back and count how many there are all together now. So we have our two teddy bears and we add one more. How many are there all together? One, two, three. There are three all together. So children need to be able to go back and then recount. Eventually, children will be able to count on from the first number. So they knew there were two and they add one more. So they say two, three. But we'll move on to that in a minute because that is a little bit more advanced. In my previous video about teaching children to count, which I will link in the description box below, I talked about how it was important for children to understand number and really understand how to count each individual item rather than just reciting the numbers. So when we're doing addition, we are really moving on from that skill. So if you haven't watched that video, make sure to check it out. Once we move on from the one more scenario, we can start adding more. So for example, I've got my two teddy bears here. I'm going to add one, two, three more teddy bears. Now, just as we did before, you're going to ask the child to count how many there are all together. So I had two and I added three more. How many are there all together? One, two, three, four, five. There are now five all together. It's also important that children understand that for the last item that they count, the last number they say, that is how many there are all together. So when they get to five, they know that that means there are five all together. I mentioned that in my counting video as well. There are lots of opportunities for counting in your environment. As I'm always saying in my videos, there are countless opportunities for learning all around you and counting and adding is no different. It can be as simple as being in a park, looking at some ducks in a pond and another one comes along. Oh look, there were three ducks. Now there's one more, how many are there all together? You can also do this kind of thing when you're dishing up dinner. I put on one fish finger, now I'm adding two more. How many are there now? I don't think even I could eat three fish fingers in one go. But still, you don't have to have lots of fancy resources to be able to do this. Just look in your child's toy box. You probably have Lego or some mini figures of some kind, building blocks, loads of different things that you've got in there that you can use as your resources. And that means it's meaningful to the child because they are already familiar with those resources. And as I'm also saying in all of my videos, it's really important to make learning relevant to the child. So once a child has kind of managed to master that one more and then adding more than one, we can start looking at adding two groups of items. This is a bit trickier. I'll show you why. So I have two teddy bears here and I have three teddy bears here. You can make up a story if you want because that will help to contextualise it for the child. So I might say that these two teddy bears live in house number one and these three teddy bears live in house number two. But we want to know how many teddy bears there are all together. Now to begin with, children will just need to count all of them together. So they'll do one, two, three, four, five. Great, that's perfect. Some children will find this a bit trickier and say one, two, one, two, three. There's three altogether because they're separate groups. Even though that doesn't look like much of a challenge, it is. So it's just important to keep going over it and saying, but we want to know how many there are all together. So if they all go into the same house, how many are there all together? So one, two, three, four, five. When children have understood this, you can start moving on to something that I mentioned earlier, which is being able to count on. This is something that we look at towards the end of reception, and some children don't even manage to do it by the end of reception because it's a bit more of a tricky concept. So I know that I've got two teddy bears in this group, so I don't need to count them again. I can start from two. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two,
three, four, five. Let's do that again, but with a bit of a higher number. So I've got three ducks here and four ducks over here. I don't want to have to count the whole first group again. I already know that there are three ducks in this pond and four ducks in this pond. So I'm going to start counting from three. Three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven ducks all together. Believe it or not, this is quite tricky for children. And the way that you can help them to prepare for an activity like this is to just practice reciting numbers to 10 or 20, starting from a number other than zero or one. So you might say to them, okay, we are going to count to 10, but we're going to start at four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If children are really struggling with this concept, you can start counting with some silent numbers to begin with. So you can lie out whatever kind of resources that you want to use. Say that you've got ten Lego pieces and you say, OK, we are not going to start saying the numbers until we get to number three. So. Three four, five, and so on. That can give them an idea of how the activity works, and then when they find that a little bit easier, you can move on to more of the trickier activities. It's important to remember that when children start learning how to count and add, that they need something tangible, or at least visual, something that they can see or that they can hold. So that was quite a quick intro to addition. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this, including how to help your child with subtraction, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you're already subscribed, or when you do subscribe, you can also click on the bell icon to make sure you get a notification every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.